know how this is supposed to go. So I'm just going to go. So here I am, <laughs> Christina Dyer, um, and I'm your district international service chair. Um, why can't I move my slides? Hold on one second. So mute yourself if you have not already, so that when you're shuffling papers and stuff, we don't hear that. Um, and please feel free to do the chat, like I said, but I'm, I've been practicing this, so um, I would prefer just to pop your questions in whenever you have them so you don't forget them, and um, I'll address them when we're finished, if that works. Yeah, what I'll do for you, uh, as they put in the questions, I'll compile them, and then I can present them to you one at a time at the end. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I apologize if any of you have seen this. I cut the video a little bit shorter um, for everybody, but there have been a lot of people that requested that I do this. So I'm gonna show you just a little bit about our district. In District 5180, we are creating a vibrant international service team that inspires all of our members to be proud of what we are doing as the district all around the world. We are one Rotary District composed of 37 unique clubs, composing of six areas of focus with eight international service committee members or DISC team members covering 22 international global grants in 17 countries across our one world. This is who we are. As you know, Rotary International's work is categorized into six areas of focus. The following slides highlight our District 5180 Global Grants by focus area and the countries we are partnering with in service. Global Grants are international grants whose funding exceeds $30,000. Our first and largest concentration of grants are around water. And it's not just about water anymore. Now it's WASH, a holistic combination of clean drinking water, adequate sanitation, and proper hygiene procedures to prevent disease and waterborne illness. These are critical to any healthy and sustainable community. Our district has 17 WASH projects around the world. One of the hardest to measure quantitatively, but most easily felt qualitatively, is peace and a lack of conflict. Currently, we have grants in Africa and Mexico related to peace building and reducing conflict. Rotary understands that it is smarter and more economical to prevent disease than to eradicate it. So disease prevention is a major area of focus. Arsenic is a naturally found in all of our water supplies. Arsenic poisoning is an example of just one type of disease prevention grant that we fund. Our disease prevention grant is focused on COVID response mechanisms in Nicaragua. Around the world, mothers everywhere are blessed with the responsibility of caring for our next generation. But in some countries, the burden is great and the resources and support are scarce. Rotary works to give mothers and children an equitable chance in life. Currently, District 5180 is funding an innovative non-perishable food source distributed to sustain mothers and children against starvation in Ivory Coast, West Africa. Economic and social development is key to the well-being and quality of a nation, region, and local community. Diversifying the economy, creating and retaining jobs, and building the local tax base is the foundation to self-sufficiency. We are working with partners in Bangladesh to build that self-sufficiency through creating small business opportunities. And literacy is not just for the youth. Rotary includes adult education, technology, teacher training, and ending gender disparity in education as part of its mission of literacy and basic education. Our South African project is focused on early childhood education. In beginning July of 2021, we look forward to supporting Rotary as it has created a new and distinct area of focus to support the environment. This will give Rotary members even more ways to bring about positive change in the world and increasing our ability to have a positive impact on our planet. And now some quick facts about our district. In addition to our global grant, 
We also have partnerships with other clubs across our district. Point West has nine partnerships, followed closely by Sacramento and Roseville. As you can see, the overwhelming majority of our grants are providing the basics in life with water sanitation and hygiene grants. If there is no water, every other area of focus is impacted. Okay, so um, that is something that I did in December as a newsletter for everyone. And I went on and kind of did a SWOT analysis about our um, district, but I cut that out because we're gonna talk about that. So I'd like to just introduce you um, to me briefly, and then kind of go on a journey with me to um, talk about where I ended up. So um, I am married, I live in Rockland and I've been married for 25 years. This year, as a matter of fact, we are heading to Bali in August to celebrate that. And um, I am thrilled. I have three young adult sons, one's at Jessup, one's um, just, left culinary school and one's at Rockland High School. So I was honored to chair the team at in Roseville for three years. Um, I was the international chair. And now that I've moved into this district role, Kathy and Dave Clements have taken over. Um, this is one of the pictures of our rotating um, international service team that we spent at other people's house, except for 2020, of course. Um, but we have a great team. Um, I am a licensed clinical professional counselor, and in my early years, I was a social worker in child protection with Los Angeles DCFS, where I removed children from dangerous homes, and then I worked with parents to reunify them with their children. I then moved on and ran a nonprofit working with genocide survivors um, from the Rwandan genocide. I built a city coalition in the suburb of Chicago, and now I run leadership retreats uh, work on building resilient corporate cultures, and I develop leadership capacity with executive and team coaching. And I tell you all of this because it seems like my life has really created who I am today in order to do this exact work with Rotary. I have spent most of my adult life working in our United States local communities, and I have seen a lot, both gritty and hard and very hopeful and inspirational. So all of it has been very meaningful. But one of the aspects that I learned from my career was that I wanted to do good work with people in dire situations, but the work that had a sustainable impact. So after experiencing some pretty bad burnout in uh, Los Angeles with DCFS, I spent a year long honeymoon backpacking around the world with my brand new husband. Um, it was my first time out of the United States, as a matter of fact, and it was my first introduction to extreme poverty. So when I came home, it was really hard to come home and do nothing, to not see what I had seen, um, or you know, just not to even try and help where I could. So that really brought me to Rotary. And this is why today I focus my work internationally. So in developing countries, as many of you know, so much is needed and every dollar has such incredible impact and I end up being far more rewarded than the people that I am serving. So fast forward to today, I have visited some 30 plus countries. I've become engaged with people from all walks of life from all over the world. And I really recognize the strength Rotary has in the world. I'm really proud of the work that our district does with its money. And it's important for me to let all of you know that I've really focused on being a good steward of your hard-earned dollars. Um, in these photos, I'm doing a needs assessment in Tanzania. Uh, this doctor that's pointing to his um, whiteboard is pointing out the people that he is solely responsible for. He is the only doctor, and that's 11,895 people in three different villages on his 125 cc motorcycle. And I am not sure you've ever seen an Africa village road. There are some beautiful highways. Here is a suburb road. And this woman is heading to the local market with her business on her head. She sells food at the market, her baby on her back. And I was thrilled that she had sandals on her feet because most didn't but there is a typical road through the villages that that doctor has to ride. This is actually in Rwanda. Um, and I asked Cyprian, our guide, um, 
you know, how can people do this? How do they get there? He says, everything takes long. And I said, but we need better roads. And he says, yes, transportation problems. And then every time I saw a truck with 49 people on it, he'd say transportation problems. And we would just both laugh. So imagine one doctor on a motorcycle for 12,000 people on these roads and very little medicine. So today, what I want you to walk away from with this presentation is really three things. Um, my district colleagues, Paul Friedrich and Dave Eden, did an excellent job explaining the technical requirements of a global grant and a district grant. I want you to walk, with way, walk away with how international service will change your life and change the life of the people that you serve. Um, I want you, number one, to feel and know the impact that your international giving makes how it grows and changes your life forever, and the simple but major difference between an international grant and an international global grant. Um, and I'm gonna to introduce to you the CALM method. It's something that I created um, in kind of a rough time in my life, and I use it actually in working at global grants. So I want you to take a look at this picture with the kids waving. You'll see the little green bag in the one boy's hand and the ball of bags, that's their soccer ball. And they wrap it with twine and they put another bag, wrap it with twine, put another bag and it has no bounce, but they have a ball. Um, and then this little boy, um, I was backing up to take some pictures and I stepped on him and he turned around and he was handing me those flowers and he said, thank you, we love America. So it was really precious. So, okay, so the simple but major difference. So, in rotary terms, an international grant is any grant created to help internationally that is under $10,000. A global grant is also an international grant, but the term global grant in rotary is required or it creates the requirement that the grant money has to be $30,000. So for me, if your club has any amount of money under 10,000 and you ask another club to partner on a grant, to equal 10,000 or even above, with the matching from the district and the matching from RI, it automatically triples and it becomes 30,000. So to me, that's the magic of Rotary. Now, next year, I know all of you have probably heard that the World Fund is only gonna match 80%. So this will become 28,000. But for right now, I'm staying in the positive. I've got <laughs> two or three more months. Um, and you know, it's just amazing that you can get this 30,000. So it's really not that hard to accomplish. And this is the impact. You grow your dollars, your resources. And what is so amazing to me is you grow such great partnerships, such great relationships. You give people hope and a chance for a better life. So here's an example of a partnership where we funded and took on the role of a host partner because a couple of our clubs were contacted by Dinesh um, they were not qualified. And so they came to me and uh, Gopal Kapoor from my club agreed to be the host partner in this. And so this is one of our grants and they're creating check dams. So a check dam, if you can imagine, is when the, um, and this is totally layman, laywoman terms for me. Okay, so the ground is saturated and it's having runoff. So all the seed runs off, there's nothing to capture it. So they build a dam right there and it stops the water from running off and then they can grow their crops. So they are masters at this because there's the water is scarce all over their region of Rajasthan. So they have done this and if you can scroll down and look, 110,000 villagers have been impacted. This means they don't have to move into the big, big cities. They don't have to leave their family home. They can remain farmers, which most people love their farming. And then the mulch animals are the cows and some of the other animals that also often also have the water. So this grant was major. And then you know Dinesh. Dinesh was my partner on the, um, the with Shekhar Mater. I'm trying to find his, um, hold on one second. My bar is not popping up. Okay. I'm gonna to have to skip it. Um, if I get back to it, I will. Oops, sorry. Um, so Dinesh sent me a very nice video saying what the working with us has meant to him and meant to his people. Basically saying this was the most important 
connection that he's ever had in Rotary. And um, he's just been a wonderful partner. So he invited us to India, all of us, on, the, uh, on a fellowship exchange once the world is permitting. Um, this is the festival of Holly Week. I think I'm saying that right. Starting around the same time as our Holy Week, he sent this to me and they all take the, the dye and stuff that they put on their foreheads and they toss it at each other and they have a lot of fun. And it's a huge festival celebrating spring and rebirth. So this is an example of a small international grant with a big impact. This is my friend, when you saw all my pictures from Rwanda, this is Bosco and he lives in Rwanda. So we've been in contact with each other since 2006. And um, one day he was saying, he mentioned going to the hospitals and I said, what are you going to the hospitals for? Are you sick? He says, no, I, since during the genocide, he was given a chance at life and a woman split up her only food between her three young children and then gave Bosco an equal amount as her own young children and he didn't know her. So he has taken that as a pay it forward. And so from that time on, he has gone to the hospital and he visits with widowed, disadvantaged, lonely um, people, especially women. He sings to them. He and his wife just talk to him, keep him company. It's beautiful. So he said, I wish I could do something to help him. That turned into, um, I said, what would you do if you could? And he said, I would build a sewing machine uh, center for, for disadvantaged women. So my club got together and with $3,000, that's it. We bought 10 sewing machines, all the materials, the equipment, everything. And, the, and we hired a mentor and a teacher. And these women just completed a four week course on sewing. They're looking for the contracts to sew the school uniforms um, in Kigali. And now we have a potential partnership with, um, it's like Dave's Days for Girls, but it's called Save a Girl, where these women can be a sewing center to make sanita reusable sanitary napkins for women all over the world. So this is a wonderful example of an economic development grant that's not a global grant. Um, Bosco couldn't have handled $30,000. Um, but we are working on this pilot project to grow and develop until a point where he can. So um, these women are showing their dresses that they learned to make. And then the young, the little clothes that they're making, that's what they call them, little clothes. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that this becomes a, not only an economic development program, but also an empowering development program for these women that don't have much of a chance. I met Christina in 2006 when uh, she came with the team to serve the poor people in Rwanda. I found in her a heart of loving people. She is a motivator and gracious. I remember how she was trying to speak Kenya Rwanda with the, every people in Rwanda. She's a wonderful woman and hardworking. She is amazing. Okay, so let me just say, I asked you to talk about the project, but um, the same thing happened with Dinesh. When I talked about, asked him to speak about the project, he spent a second or two on the project and then talked about all the different Rotarians that were involved with that project. So you can see that our partnerships create really good relationships. So this is an instance where um, COVID hit, um, Kigali declared, I will call it martial law, but basically it was what you couldn't leave your home. And so many of those female students were banned from leaving their homes and they don't have refrigerators, right? So they go to the market every day to get their food to feed themselves and if, if they have a child to feed their children. So they were at risk of starving and had no food at all. So because of our partnership with India, Dinesh, I told him about it. He went to his club on our behalf and he asked us, club for funding to feed these women in Kigali and their children. And then uh, Bosco was given permission to bring the food to the students. And then the very same situation happened with uh, Valores Peru. As you know, most of us were asked to give that emergency funding to Valores Peru through Jay um, Alling with the Folsom Club. And I went back to Dinesh and Dinesh gave us $1,000 to help the people in Peru. 
And that's all just based on our relationship. So um, this is the foodstuffs that Bosco got. And this is, he sent me a ton of pictures, but basically the children were hugging the sugar bags and hugging the sour gum. So this is, um, we gave them rice, sorghum, <coughs> excuse me, beans, sugar, and flour. And they have a little bit of cooking oil. And then that's what they live on and they supplement with anything that's growing out in their garden. So just very impressive partnerships. So the third part of the learning that I want you to consider is to remember this acronym called CALM. <coughs> I created this method while leading a position that was very high stakes, very high stress, very high emotions, and highly personal. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to drink water. <coughs> so <coughs> what I decided is that I needed something to remember. <coughs> and one of those things was when I'm communicating, I need to be very candid, but I need to say what I need to say with compassion. I was struggling to say some tough things in a kind way. So I became very intentional about it. And I was able to do that because clarity is kindness. And that leaves no assumptions to be guessed at. Um, being creatively curious, especially with working internationally, it's really respectful. It's endeavoring to understand their world <clears throat> and understand how they do things and not turning around saying this is that's the wrong way. This is a better way. <clears throat> you can do that through questioning, but not just telling. The next one, of course, is assessments. So with a, with a global grant, the most important foundation is our needs assessments. Um, we want these projects to meet the needs of our partners, and we want our work and our impact to, to last. So along with accountability, is roles and responsibilities, making sure everybody understands what they're supposed to do, um, plus the reporting and the milestones. It's very important that our, all the partners understand who is, re, who is responsible for reporting on these global grants. In the next um, project I'll talk about, the Rotarians were giving the NGO the responsibility for reporting, <clears throat> like login information and everything into the Rot Rotary website. Um, so that they didn't um, have to, or um, I don't know if it was that they didn't have to do it. They just knew that the NGO knew a lot more and could probably do a better job. But I, I still, to this day, think that it could have been done as a partnership. And when it comes to accountability, keep it personal. Focus on your own accountability first. Make sure you're positive about it with everybody, and then make sure you're focusing on um, the performance. And then love, or uh, let, let's start with language. So language is not only the spoken language, whether it's Kinyarwandan, like Bosco speaks, or English, but it's also tone. It's how we speak to, talk to, and encourage them to tell us more. And that's a lot of what I say. When I don't understand something, I'll say, tell, tell me more. And then there's no judgment. They just go on. And then we get a deeper understanding. Um, no gossip, no overtalk, and particularly no condensation, not condensation, con uh, what's the word? You all know, no big consent, <laughs> condescending. <laughs> um, and then really to focus on, you know, that this is their life and it's our life. So try to be the best person you can be at that time and do everything with love. Come from a place of love and caring and good intentions, and that will um, help you when the frustrations frustrations creep up, and they will, um, that you come from a place of love. And that is, <clears throat> I learned that when I was telling you we were in that high stakes situation, and my board of directors actually um, broke into my office and ransacked it, and stole our sign off the front of our building. And it was so strange. I called my direct supervisor and she came in and we stood there with our mouths hanging open, you know, laughing because it was so ridiculous. And she looked at me and she said, Christina, we didn't love them enough. And I wanted to wring her neck, but I <laughs> held my tongue. And um, basically we talked through it. And she basically just said, you know, when you come from a place of love, you come from trying to understand. And we didn't do that enough. So that was 
that was our fault. So you can tell she's obviously a mentor of mine because she's amazing. So, and the last one is meaning. Remember what your why is. If any of you have read Simon Sinek, start with your why. You understand that that is foundational and that'll help you get through anything. So what is the significance of this Rotary project? It helps you to keep going when and if the project gets old or overwhelming, and it probably will do both of those things. Um, and then focus on the mission. The mission is bigger than all of us, but the mission also includes a bunch of other M words. If your mission is about Rotary, then it's about making sure you get what you need to get so we can market our projects. This will put Rot Rotary in a positive light. It increases men membership. Um, it also can help you mentor other people that wanna come from Rotaract and come into our clubs. So if Rotary's mission is also to make sure that you measure and you monitor. So there's a lot of M's when it comes to Rotary, but meaning and mission is to me is foundational. So this is Dr. Jen Cavallari. <clears throat> she is with the NGO Self. She was a fabulous speaker at our club in early 2018. I went up to her after the meeting and I said, let's work together. Let's do a grant in Honduras. You're, she was just amazing. Um, we joined forces and she really turned out to be a rock star partner. Um, we've provided clean water to over about a thousand people in three different villages in Honduras. Many of these people have never had clean water and they've never had water coming into their homes in their entire lives. So um, she's got a couple of things to say as well. So we originally met at a Rotary meeting where I was talking about the water projects that we were doing for self and looking at recruiting partners. And Christina came up to me and not only did we partner together on these projects in Honduras, but we also formed a really special friendship. So, um, you know, that's just talking about how um, another, you know, she's from Sacramento, which is interesting, but she's a doctor in Maine for about six months and she's a doctor in Honduras. <clears throat> and now this is the Honduras project. So this was a global grant by our Roseville Club for approximately about 75,000 was our contribution. The whole entire grant with all the money they raised and some other um, in-kind donations was about 200,000. We had multiple partners um, including self, the municipalities, and I'll show you that in a second. Oh, I want to say, oh, I want to go back. Um, watch the dog in this video. He's pretty funny. Ah! Hold on. Here we go. This should work. So you can see the excitement or hear the excitement of the people when breaking through to the water. They were, the kids just cheer, cheer, cheer. You can see the picture with the water coming out. The boy was so excited. So these are the main partnerships and take a look at all those Rotary clubs. We had 13 clubs participating on this. Um, we had the Rotary Club of Don Lee was our, was our host partner and the Rotaract Club actually built an entire sanitation hygiene station. Um, they wanted to do something that was more permanent and not just kind of a drop in the bucket. And so they really worked hard. They designed it themselves. Um, I'm hoping that they went over and kind of got their hands dirty and worked with them, but they've been very um, concerned with COVID. Um, and then all the other partnerships, World Vision taught the curriculum for the sanitation. SANA is the Honduran Water Agency, and it also happens to be a Rotarian, so they were involved and then all the mayors from the districts were also involved and they donated land and time and money and energy and all of that. So this is you know, kind of proof that it takes the village to do all this. So some of the best practices that I've learned, sometimes the hard way is that working with a nonprofit or an NGO partner on the ground is vital to me. Um, you know, Rotarians are volunteers and they often don't have the time and so the projects take on, you know, become a little bit longer than they need to be. If you have an NGO on the ground, it's what they do all day long. And they're usually community members and they have a heart for the projects. 
So a strong relationship with them, a strong relationship with your host Rotary Club is important. It should be nurtured and cherished. And when they go silent, you go find them. Um, as well as your Rotary International officer in Evanston. Ours was key to getting our project through. Um, and then of course, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without technology, especially WhatsApp. I love WhatsApp. It, it, everything works smoothly. You can drop pro, um, pictures and documents, video chats. It's wonderful. So if you're gonna do an international grant, I would recommend WhatsApp. And then traveling to the country yourself, if you have the opportunity, Get your hands dirty with the project and the people, and that'll really sustain you when times get rough. You know, sharing a meal and laughing together goes a long way and it creates a long bond, a great bond. Um, and then finally, my calm method is what helps me in so many areas of my life, but especially with global grants. So I just wanna wrap up when giving globally, focus on all of our brothers and sisters all over the world. You know, it's all just one planet recognize and honor their ways of doing things and other people's ways of being, their experiences, their ideas, uh, respond, document, record everything and follow up and then do everything according to our four-way test and with the heart of a Rotarian. This is my Dominican Republic team. Um, you can see Clayton Lee's in there, Roy Alexander, um, and this was a partnership with a club in Michigan. And we all met there. We had a <clears throat> fantastic time. Um, Michael Bullington was dancing with all the women. If you know Michael, he's a big salsa dancer. So, and this is my little Rwandan woman. Museka Jani means smile big. <laughs> That's what she did for me when I said Museka. So that is it. Does anybody have any questions? There was, <clears throat> there was only one question. Uh... How easy is calm when conversing in different languages? Um, so I do a lot of, um, you know, you can screen share on WhatsApp or use Zoom. Um, so I do a lot of mime, but Google Translate is a lifesaver. And so you can highlight and copy every conversation in WhatsApp. You drive, drop it into Google Translate and you see it. And then you can respond right there in Google Translate in English, and then you just shoot it over to WhatsApp and it goes in Spanish, or I don't think they have Kinyarwandan yet, but um, yeah, it actually is <clears throat> not hard, really. And um, I don't get frustrated by other languages. I, I actually enjoy them and I try to learn a little bit. That's what Bosco was saying in his video is that Christina was trying to speak Kinyarwanda with everybody. And so I'd, I'd I'd make them smile and say crazy white woman and they'd laugh, <laughs> but you know, I screwed things up, but it, it, that's not the hard part. The hard part I think is um, respecting and recognizing other people's sense of time. So um, when I was in, uh, I don't know what country in Africa, but somebody said to me five pole pole mama, which means slow down in Swahili. And I said, uh, are we doing American minutes or are we doing African minutes? And he says, African minutes. And so I just realized I need to wait. His five was 20, you know? So it's just that kind of, I don't know, understanding where you're coming, where they're coming from and you're coming from and you can have a laugh over it. So that's the wonderful part of it. Uh, there was a comment from Brian Moore. It said, Point West is always looking for to partner with other clubs in our district. So please let them know if you have a need. I have about <clears throat> five projects right now of people that have reached out to me. Um, I should probably just bring them all forward through my team. I've been saying to everybody, we're in the last two months, most of us don't have any money, but we could prepare for the next fiscal year. But a lot of, a lot of people are trying to get their grants in right now um, before the money changes. But I'll tell you this morning, I was on a call with um, two RI officers um, and our Bangladesh partners. And when we were saying, we've already submitted the grant and they've had some further questions. So we said, if we get these questions answered by June 30th, will we get 100% of the money? And she said, number one, which was interesting, if there's money in the World Fund. 
and get it in by about June 10th so that we can go through the funding and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, there's, it's time's running out right now. So people are, are unrealistic if they probably think everything's going to get in by June 30th. So, but I'll definitely bring them forward. Any other questions? Mary Jo? Christina, Christina, you said you have five projects going right now. Can you tell us what those are? Um, five projects are sitting and waiting. So there's two in Uganda. There's, um, here's a very interesting one and I wanna talk about this one in particular. Um, I <clears throat> was approached by Mahmoud Far Farizidi and he helped on my Honduras project. Um, they are done a lot of projects with corneal transplant surgeries. They're out of um, Arlington, Virginia or Maryland, one of the two right there on the border. So this new grant is the cooperating organization is John Hops Hopkins Public School of Health. They are going to be doing the work and it's for our Native Americans on the Navajo reservation. It started by the Rotary Club of Bombay, India. They are actually the international partner and we are the host partner. And so the only other grant that I know has been like this where the money is coming from outside and coming to the US is Brian and um, Bob Deering's um, human trafficking grant. So I think this is an incredible opportunity for us um, to work with John Hops Hod Johns Hopkins, I can never say it, um, with this India club and with our Native Americans. Um, so the, the statistics are staggering about well, how they've been impacted by COVID, their suicide and um, drug overdose and, you know, so many issues. So I will make sure I send that. I mean, I can send it out to everybody in the district, um, but they would like, so they ha are trying to turn the grant in right now. And I told them most likely, I know for our club in Roseville, I don't know what our budget is. So I don't wanna make any promises. Um, I know we've raised a thousand dollars in our club on our own, but um, as I told him as soon as we know our budget, we will let him know. And he said, could you just give the commitment? And I said, yes, absolutely. We will get give the commitment and then our district matches dollar for dollar. So he was on cloud nine. So, and that's a great one. So I'll make sure I send that out. Okay, so that's one. Then there's two, uh, one's an economic development project in Uganda. One's a water project in Uganda. One is a project working with African mediators that um, is on peace and development and on mediation um, and conflict resolution. Um, I just got one from Beirut and Lebanon. Um, I haven't read it enough to tell you anything about it. And then there's one more, I think Syria, I think Syria. So, and those are just the five I can think of off the top of my head. But then there's other ones in the works as, to, as well that are trying, that have already been written like um, the Camp Hope Project with Point West. Um, and I can't think of all of them, but I'll come to you, Mary Jo. No. Okay, so I have another question. If you're a club that cannot, well, I cannot, it's not the right word. If you're a club that isn't as capable of giving money, um, are there goods that can be collected? For example, my head went to a friend of mine who has a room full of materials, uh, sewing material. And when I saw those ladies in their dresses, can you donate some materials for projects like that? Do you have needs that clubs can get involved in that way? So <clears throat> I would have to find, you know, fabric is heavy. So yeah. in order to get that fabric to Rwanda, number one, it's co probably cost prohibitive. And number two, it's actually better to send them money to purchase from their own local communities because then you're stimulating their economy locally too. But maybe for the Native American grant, um, or maybe for Days for Girls or Save a Girl, where I know Days for Girls is a project that that's what we did. And we took them 
the finished reusable sanitation, sanitary napkins to Dominican Republic. Um, but we sewed them at Bayside Church. So there might be a need, especially for like the soft flannel cotton fabric that they could use those materials. And then they end up internationally as well. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, does Brian have his hand up? Yes, I do. Um, I'm really excited about the uh, the Indian uh, local American Native Indian project. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be very attractive for many members who, for whatever personal reasons they are, they like to see the money stay in the states. Yeah. And uh, this being an international project, working and partnering with another uh, Rotary Club, of course, overseas, mm -hmm. and spending the money here would be a real great sell uh, to those people who are looking to uh, make donations and keep the money here. Is there a chance you could share that with, with us? Um, I know that Point West, that might be very, very attractive. We've yet to do anything in that vein. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do it tonight after we get off. Um, uh, Brent's not here. Desiree, do you mind? Or maybe, Brent, is that you, District 5180? Any chance? Um, That's Rob Sachs. Oh, okay. So um, maybe I'll just send it to every Rotarian and whoever has, you know, cause there's a lot of us that have Native American heritage and we don't know who they are. Kathy Clemens said, oh, I am, you know? So um, and we have a heart for that. So yeah, I'll absolutely send it to every Rotarian. And um, I would be thrilled if we could make this a district-wide grant. Wouldn't that be awesome is every club, even if a club that doesn't have a lot of money gave $100, it would just be skin in the game and we would all be, you know, in partnership with this grant that would really help people here. So, Is, is there a dollar amount, Christina, they're looking for? They're looking for 6000 from our district, which I know yeah, that's, that's pennies compared yes. to what we can do. Yes. So... Um, you know, even if we did like, you know, I was talking about it before everybody got on when Mahmoud called me and said, do you think you could come up with this? And I said, what do you need? He said, we were hoping for six. And I said, well, I can do six. I know I can raise six And then our district will match and that's 12. And he was hooping and hollering that that means it's going to be 18. But, you know, I told him just give me some time and we'll come back. And I'm sure it's going to be better than that even so. I would love to, to see that. So thank you, Brian. Thank you for the encouragement. Come on, Siva, I know you got a question. Siva and I were gonna work on a Honduran grant together. He went there as well to kind of hang out with everybody. And then he started, he did another one in, uh, in Tegucigalpa. So really no questions? Oh, thanks, Christina. It's nice to see you again. So, so what are your questions? I think you did, you did such a nice job, Christina. Oh. <laughs> you covered us so many things. It was yeah. wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. Is there any um, questions about the difference between an international non-global grant and an international global grant? It's really just money and impact. It's also more work. Of course, but I'll tell you what, I've been working hard with Bosco for $3,000. It's daily. <laughs> and he sends me daily 12 pictures every day, I swear. Oh, let me show you this while I've got you here. So they're graduating. Um, they had to shut down during COVID and that. And so, oh, you can't see it. That is so bizarre. <laughs> oh, can you see it a little bit there? You'd have to turn off your background in, in order yeah. for us to see. Oh, well. Anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. that's it. So this is for Stella. She was the mentor of the group and I put our Roseville Rotary and signed it. And he said the, the women are just thrilled that they have a, um, I can't use the word diploma cause it's not, but a certification. And Stella's name is Stella, Stella Matutina Mujawama Laia. <laughs> so I don't think that's gonna fit on the diploma on the certificate, but it did. And the Comerizajo project that he's doing is stands for never give up. 
So after the genocide, a lot of people gave up. And so a lot of these, um, you know, there's a lot of trickle down of emotional history with a lot of these women. So it's easy to get, um, have despair, you know? So this was a wonderful project for them. Christina, I'll add the fact that our club is also capitalized on the Zoom format in that we have had partners overseas do presentations at the club and it really invigorates the members to see where their money's going and how it impacts those people. And it's a wonderful opportunity for any club to have that chance to display their donations and where it goes to their members. It'll really boost international service. I agree, Brian, 100%. Yeah, it's a great program. It's been very successful. We've had three presentations, I believe, in our club with partners from overseas. Mm -hmm. Did I give a, did did we come on yours for the Honduras project, yeah? Yes. Moika? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then when Jennifer, Jennifer Jones, is she the incoming after Shekhar, yeah? Yes. So when she was on, I called Fanny, who's the lead Rotaract, and Fanny is the one in Honduras. She called me and said, Christine, I'm so excited. Um, There's going to be a female Rotary International president. She was so thrilled because um, we've had, um, sorry, guys, but we've had a few conversations about the machismo in Honduras, (laughs) and how it's been a little difficult to work with occasionally. And so she was so thrilled with that. So when Jennifer Jones was on the Zoom call, I called Fanny and I um, chatted with the host and said, call on Fanny. So she and Jennifer Jones spoke. She was on cloud nine. She called me the second it was over and she was squealing. She was so excited. So it's just, you know, Zoom's awesome. I mean, everyone's tired of it, I know, but I couldn't do my work without it. It's here to stay. It is. And it will open a lot of doors and communication beyond the boundaries that we currently have. That's right. I agree. Christina, I just want to make a comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had a joint bilingual meeting a couple of months ago with Tegucigalpa. Mm -hmm. And um, it was great in the sense of the project was about 80% complete in the sense infrastructure was completed. So they were able to show the project and Everyone had fun for about a couple of hours. In fact, the meeting, we spent about two hours in a club meeting, joint meeting, actually. Okay. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, Dr. Jen just invited me to go back to Honduras on her dime, which was awesome, um, in a couple of weeks. But my mom's coming to visit, and I haven't seen, she's in Chicago. I haven't seen her in almost a year, so I can't go. But they are doing a full inauguration on all three Um, water towers and water projects. And I don't know if you noticed in the pictures, but um, most of you know Ralph Felix. He was kind of my mentor in international service. And his wife, Alyssa, died in this past year after 60 years of marriage. So um, she was always so supportive of him. So they painted on the side of one of the water towers in in honor of Alyssa and Ralph Felix and their dedication to Rotary over all so many years. So it's painted loud and proud up on the top of the water tower. So they did, you know, I just love the, the, um, the friendships that we create through these projects. I have a, I noticed something on your slide that had the 13 Rotary clubs involved. One of them was an interact club. How, that, yeah. how did that work? Uh, Whitney High School. And, and um, those Whitney High School kids worked really, really hard. Randy Green from South Placer is their um, mentor. And so he went to them and said, how would you like to do a project in Honduras and really make an impact? And they all agreed. So they had some fundraisers and R- Randy promised them, whatever you raise, our club will match. And so I think they raised up to $2,000. It was pretty amazing. So then South Placer donated the same amount. So it just grew and grew. So that was fantastic. I went to the um, meeting and presented on it, but it was funny. I think it just went way over their head. I I couldn't get a question out of them. (laughs) They just stared at me. (laughs) I said, anybody want to go? Let's go to Honduras together. We'll go. 
And the teacher told me later, she's like, these students are A to Z to college to here. Like you threw them a loop. They were speechless. They couldn't even imagine going to Honduras. That would stop their studies. So, but it was great. So did everybody learn something new? Definitely. Yes. Good, good, good. good. Because I, I, I figured people didn't want to hear more of the technicality. Um, the, you know, you learn that as you go painfully and, and every grant's different, but um, you know, it's kind of the heart of it that gets you in there. All right, well, if nobody has any more questions, I think we could probably sign off, yeah? Desiree, is there a protocol? Thank you, Christina. Yeah. No, that's it. We thank you. We're, a little, we're even about 10 minutes over. Appreciate everybody staying on the call. And it was a great presentation. Thank you so much, Christina.